White-tailed deer are one of the most widespread and popular wildlife species in North America, as well as Pennsylvania's state animal. Public recreational and aesthetic values of white-tailed deer are closely intertwined with our state's history and heritage. However, these values can be obscured in urban and suburban environments. Has the once idolized white-tailed deer turned into a marauding bandit in your neighborhood? What actions, if any, can be taken by a community? Where can you get help? Deer management can be overwhelming, so let's start from the top. First, what do we mean by deer management? Wildlife management attempts to balance the needs of a species with the needs of people, using the best available science. Deer management is the art and science of reaching defined goals by manipulating and or maintaining habitats and populations. In Pennsylvania, it is the Game Commission's responsibility to manage all wildlife in the Commonwealth. This is defined by statute in Title 34 of the Pennsylvania Game and Wildlife Code. This is a huge task covering over 460 species found in the state. Deer are one of these valued species and are perhaps our most notable management responsibility. Therefore, when the Game Commission takes action to manage deer or any species, it is within the context of our agency mission statement, which is to manage all wild birds, mammals, and their habitats for current and future generations. While the Game Commission manages for all citizens of the Commonwealth, every community is unique. Communities can tailor fit their mission and management to accommodate this individuality. So what is the Game Commission's management philosophy with regard to urban deer? The Game Commission's primary management method is hunting. This also is defined by law. This is both appropriate and applicable when it comes to deer, as they have been managed through regulated hunting for decades across the United States. Therefore, the Game Commission supports and encourages hunting as a means of managing deer populations where safe and appropriate, even in developed areas. Annually, the Game Commission specifies hunting seasons and bag limits, promotes increased hunting opportunities in developed areas, and provides deer hunters with tools to increase their success. Enacting these types of regulations is part of the Game Commission's duties and does not require any community involvement. Bear in mind that regulations adopted by the Game Commission do not negate any landowner rights or privileges under the law. While it is the Game Commission's legal responsibility to manage deer, it cannot and does not come into a community and solve deer-human conflicts. The Game Commission sets the framework for deer management. Communities must abide by these regulations, but this framework provides municipalities plenty of ways to tailor their response to deer issues. Think of it as building a house. The Game Commission comes over and drops off several blueprints and a box of construction tools. It's up to your community to choose the design and the tools that will be used. While traditional hunting is the most economical and effective way to manage deer populations, its application may be limited in some developed areas due to real or perceived safety concerns, social values, or other constraints. Acknowledging these limitations, the Game Commission recognizes the need for alternative approaches and is willing to work with communities to find a solution to their unique deer management issues. So where should you begin? Proceeding without a plan is the folly of many community deer management actions. It is imperative to assess the situation and develop a management plan. But who will take on this task? Developing a plan will require gathering information on the extent of deer-human conflicts, the attitudes of local residents, and the availability of management options. Form a deer management committee to explore the topic. Most communities recognize they have a deer problem, but cannot define what the problem is, who is responsible for solving it, or how to solve it. The committee can assess the situation, gather input and information, clearly define the problems, work on goals, and develop your deer management plan. Once developed, your community deer management plan will set direction, list management options, provide recommendations, 
and direct implementation. But how do you build a deer management plan? A plan has three parts, mission, goals, and objectives. Let's take a look at each one. First, you must put your deer management activities into context with the mission. Think of it as a broad concept like the Game Commission's mission statement to manage all wild birds, mammals, and their habitats for current and future generations. What would be the mission statement for your community? To provide residents with a safe environment? To preserve natural and cultural amenities? To offer recreational opportunities? If you are developing a deer management plan, deer are in some way preventing you from achieving your mission. With your mission defined and the knowledge that deer are impeding your progress as a community towards it, what deer-related problems do you want to solve? What do you want to accomplish with this deer management plan? Answers to these questions would be your goals. Goals describe what you want to achieve. Your deer management goals may be to reduce the number of resident complaints or deer vehicle collisions, to preserve the natural diversity of your community's flora and fauna, to minimize deer depredation of agricultural crops or landscaping, or to educate residents on the action they can take to reduce deer-human conflicts. With your goals, you know what you want to achieve, but how do you know when you get there? Objectives measure progress towards your goals. Data form their basis. This monitoring component of your deer management plan is a long-term gauge, looking at changes over years. For example, if one of your goals is to reduce deer vehicle collisions, you need to keep track of deer vehicle collisions in your community. You cannot have a goal without a way to measure progress towards that goal. These are the three fundamental components of any management plan, but they in no way tell the whole story. To assist communities in acquiring the necessary knowledge and information, the Game Commission has developed a Guide to Deer Management in Developed Areas of Pennsylvania, which can be found on our website. This guide covers how to develop a deer management plan and cites examples of plans in other communities. A section on techniques and tools includes removal methods like managed hunts and non-removal methods like fencing and alternative landscaping and lists the advantages and disadvantages of each. This all-in-one guide puts the resources you need in one document to take some of the mystery out of community deer management. However, the most important part of your community deer management plan is the community. Droves of communities have deer issues. We often read about them in the newspaper. Some are successful in addressing their deer issues, but many are not. Failure is usually because decision makers jump straight to solutions without defining the issues or creating a plan, thereby leaving the community out of the process. Deer management at any level is complicated. Deer in urban and suburban environments cause substantial controversy and can divide communities. While pleasing everyone is not a reality, working together to build support for your community deer management program is. Remember, human perceptions define wildlife conflicts. An interaction is only negative if someone perceives it as such. And when it comes to deer, there are a wide variety of those that like and dislike certain interactions. This is where the difficulty with regard to deer management stems. Every stakeholder has a different tolerance level and classification of good and bad interactions. For example, the threshold of a farmer's tolerance for deer is much lower than that of a hunter, while homeowners may be accepting of a wide range of deer populations. Deer management involves complex ecological and biological components. Add in the social elements of an urban or suburban area and the muddy waters don't get much clearer. In order to move forward, the community needs to be committed to a common purpose. This common purpose recognizes the deer issues faced by the community and the dedication of community leaders, affected stakeholders, and the wildlife agency to address them. However, this commitment to a common purpose does not imply agreement on a solution. 
Deer management affects everyone. Therefore, all community stakeholders should be involved. This increases understanding of the decision-making process and avoids backlash from residents about actions being taken without their knowledge or consent. Engaging residents can take many forms. Options range from unsolicited input, like letters and emails, to organized outreach, like public meetings. Each has advantages and disadvantages. Passive methods include collecting public comment via letters, emails, phone calls, or conducting surveys. Surveys contact stakeholders systematically by mail or phone. This requires development of a survey, identification of a group to be surveyed, and personnel costs for distribution and data entry. This type of stakeholder participation is a one-way flow of information. There is no stakeholder interaction or one-on-one -on -one connections. For stakeholder involvement to be successful, it must be viewed as fair, just, and inclusive. These valid methods might not be perceived this way by the public due to the lack of interaction. Citizen task forces, focus groups, open houses, and public meetings revolve around this interaction between decision makers as well as between stakeholders themselves. Information and opinions are exchanged rather than simply given. With regard to public involvement, it's the journey that really matters. Meaning you will likely gather similar information no matter what method you use. However, an important aspect of public involvement is the participation process itself. The process can affect relationships and ultimately the outcome. Effective local leadership is also critical in any community action. These leaders can be elected officials as well as active or influential community members. These people are necessary for sustaining the decision-making process. Formal leaders can lend their credibility to efforts that address public issues, especially those that are controversial or complex. Informal leaders often make personal connections. They draw people into the issue, thereby getting more of the community involved. Taking any action concerning deer is difficult enough in communities, especially if there is no history of deer management. These leaders need to be engaged from the start, informed of the issues, made aware of management options, and given frequent updates. Unless local leadership is involved and on board, there will be no movement to address deer problems or to implement a deer management plan. Another key aspect of successful community deer management is outreach. While the focus here is on deer, these efforts can cross over to other wildlife or community issues. Gathering pertinent, factual materials and creating an effective network for their distribution will pay dividends. By providing information and educational opportunities, you can be sure your residents are getting accurate information from reputable sources. A proactive approach is imperative to success. Channels include newsletters, public meetings, brochures, social media, and internet sites. These channels can be used to increase knowledge and awareness of deer management issues and the steps being taken to address them. Transmitting messages effectively is essential and will contribute to the credibility of the overall effort. Now that you are familiar with the steps and actions needed to embark on deer management in your community, you may have noticed that knowing the number of deer was never mentioned as a component for managing them. Many communities get hung up on knowing the number of deer in the area. How many are there? How many should there be? Communities get preoccupied with a number that has little meaning. Deer problems are not defined by the number of deer. They are defined by the impact of those deer and the values of the residents they affect. Population estimates are overrated. Knowing the number of deer will not reduce deer vehicle collisions or increase the natural diversity of your parks. Trends are important relative to your goals. If your goal is to reduce deer vehicle collisions, you have achieved this goal when there are less accidents, not when there are 20 deer per square mile. 
The number of deer may be linked to deer vehicle collisions, but you don't need one to achieve the other. Resources spent on estimating deer numbers are better spent on other aspects of your deer management plan. Even if deer numbers are ecologically balanced in your community, residents may still be experiencing unacceptable levels of conflict. We hope this introduction to community deer management has been helpful. More information and resources can be found in the Living with Whitetails section on the Deer page of the Game Commission's website.